I titled this piece Rosa Sparks. I've sent this piece to another gallery and I had the person try to correct my spelling and say, oh, you meant to say Rosa Parks. I was like, no, I meant what I said, Rosa Sparks. And I sent that to them, and because I made this piece, I had a residency at the University of Notre Dame. It was another intersection time with Letitia. I was, I was able to speak to students over there at this institution. So I was there for 10 days, and I created this one of the pieces that I created right, and during that time here. I called the piece Rosa Sparks, and I'm going to give you a little story about it to give you a little bit more richness about the piece. While I was there, I did several lectures. And a few of them I did at, you know, at Notre Dame. I talked to the students. I talked over at the, the Snipe Museum. And I spoke at a church called St. Augustine Rapid right Street. And they had a special at the, at the center of it. It's called the Segura Art Center. And while I was there, they had people from um, the PBS come over and do a little special on little kids. And they said, Steve, would you do a little workshop with little kids when they come over here? Because it'd be wonderful to be a, a, a working artist and so forth. I said, sure, let's do it. So, People came in, they had the camera crews, cameras going everywhere on me and so forth. And work with the kids. I had kids singing, we dancing, we had a good old time. I had them doing watercolor model prints and we making artwork and so forth. The kids are singing and dancing, having a great time. They had this one teacher that was in the audience having just as much fun as the kids were. She was just happy, just oh my goodness, having a good old time. And she was just smiling and so forth. So anyway, they had the cameras on me and they said, well, Steve, can you tell us about your art piece that you're working on? At that moment, I had not fully decided if I was going to call it these rules of sparks. So I said to him on camera, I said, I'm tentatively calling this piece Rose of Sparks. And when I said that, the young woman who was having a great time, she just turned her head and covered her eyes and she went walking off. And I saw this in the back of the audience. And I'm on camera, I'm with this guy, and I'm trying to keep my composure up. I just saw this woman walk off, and I'm like, what happened? You know, and I'm just trying to keep talking, and I got through it. I got my composure back, and I kept going through it, and so forth. But after the film was over, I wouldn't be lying. I wanted to find this young woman. And I got over to her and said, hey. And I said, well, um, is everyone okay? And she's like, she's like, yes, you see, things fine. She said, I couldn't get out of bed today. And I said, I said, oh, I'm sorry. And she said, I couldn't get out of bed. She said, and I wasn't going to get out of bed. I just, I was so depressed. And she said, but someone told me to get up and get out of the house and leave and go in and work with the children. And when I got here and I saw you work with the children, and I'm just so moved by the way you work with the kids. And I just knew I, that was the purpose of my life that I need to do, that I need to go and work with these children. I saw for you what I'm supposed to do. And I said, oh, I'm so, I'm so wonderful. I said, I'm so glad that that happened for you. And I'm standing there, and, I, and, I, and then she said, then, she, then the tears just started coming. And I said, I said, all right, you know, I'm trying to get courage. <laughs> and then she said, and then you said my name. And then I was like, I was like, what? I said, what, are you, what are you talking about? She said, I'm Sparks. <laughs> and I'm like, she said, that's my name, I'm Sparks. <laughs> and she said, I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> all the out there, she's crying out to the hook. <laughs> stand there. She's crying all over my shoulder, I'm holding her, and everybody looking for that So I had to name this piece Rose of Sparks. <laughs> so that, the name was solidified at that moment. So Rose of Sparks. I call it that, yes, it is alluded to Rose of Sparks because in 1955 she refused to give up her seat in Montgomery, Alabama. And when she refused to give up her seat, I show her sitting down. If any psychologist in the room, you know this woman is not going to be moved. Because if you know anything about conversation, the person that their legs crossed, their arms crossed, they didn't listen to you. <laughs> they were like, they wait for you to finish. Because <laughs> they got something to say to you. And so she said it with her body, and she refused to give up her seat. And she's sitting here to show you the seat buckling underneath her. But I added some other little extra elements and textures in it that shows up in some of my works. And you'll note that she has this little shield on her body, and it says A-O-G. The AOG is recurring in my work because it alludes to the book of Ephesians where Paul basically says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and things and high places. We must put on the whole armor of God. And that's what that represents as you see the halo about her head protecting her mind, the breastplate protecting her chest, the feet are shod with preparedness to go out to do the next line of work that they did because over a year they refused, like we refused to ride the buses in Montgomery. They left, and as I show you the picketers in the background, as the signs are breaking in this space, 
as one of the words that says I am is pushing through, which is alluding to a couple of things. One, a biblical element, but it also alludes to the time in the 60s when they walked around the signs and said, I am a man. The speak of the humanity was trying to be sought from them and denied them. But the I am also alludes to Moses when he went before Pharaoh and he went before God and he said, well, what shall, what shall I say that I call you? And God told him, I am sent you. And so that's my belief in terms of civil rights era. That's what I believe is protecting them to get us to the point where we are now. They broke down many walls. They broke down many elements and issues that we don't have to deal with right now because people put themselves on the front line to deal with those issues. But as I said, the philosophy of my work is hinged on this idea of the dirge. And the second line, it's in this piece as well. Because in 1955, when she refused to give up her seat in Montgomery, something else heinous took place in Muddy, Mississippi in the same year, where a little boy by the age of 14 years old left from Chicago and went south to visit his cousins, and he was killed for some act that supposedly happened between him and the white woman. We don't know what actually happened because the story changed all the way to the point where before the woman died. So the E.T. on the hat of this character, diagonal from Rosa Parks, is representation of Emmett Till. But we had a whole generation, we had a whole decade of just serious issues and things taking place because Malcolm X lost his life in the Baltimore Ballroom in 1965, Martin Luther King lost his life in 1968 in Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee, fighting for the same sanitation workers who walked with the signs and said, I am a man. So in this issue, in terms of the front of the bus and what Rosa Parks was trying to do, I'm also alluding to the back of the bus because these are the issues in which we are dealing with today that goes foundationally back to our nation, which is built upon slavery. And so in this image, a guy has his hands up. It's alluding to hands up, don't shoot, which is Michael Brown. The kid with the hoodie holding the can of Arizona tea is alluding to Trayvon Martin, who lost his life down in Florida. The letters K-O-O-L, not for cool, baby, cool, baby, not that kind of cool, but K-O-O-L for a pack of cigarettes because Eric Garner lost his life for selling symbols on the street in New York City. I push this piece down, I pack it down between these two characters here, which I use a whole biblical concept or construct as the little baby is in the arms of this mother and she has, the little baby has a peace sign up, which is an image that typically represents Christ. But I took away the halo that I put around Rosa Parks and I didn't put it inside of here because I wanted to basically begin to speak of the everyday deities that I think we all are. The everyday sacredness of our beings. Every single one of us in the king through a mother came through that middle passage connected to their umbilical cord that was severed and allowed us to have life and to have breath inside of our bodies and to interact with each other. But we came with the stains of the fabric of this nation that has disrupted and corrupted the fabric of our beings. And a lot of the fight that we're doing is a lot of stuff that's internal inside of us, but stuff that's in our families, it's in our communities, it's in this nation, it's in this world. And so that's where part of this fight has to continue on as we deal with these issues that are on the back of this bus because we're all riding in the same one. So this is the work that we have to do. We have to continue to use her as an example to continue to be those sparks within the community to create change societally, globally. I believe as printmakers, as artists, as painters, as sculptors, I believe we are the ones of the truth savers. We're the ones who see the world a little differently than most people. And through that lens, we can take and create and we can begin to deposit things in the world and get people to see and to see differently, to look deeper into ourselves, to see the beauty in the everyday, to see the sacredness in the everyday that we all share. That's the power. 